This morning, Jesus hires Peter for the job of the papacy. And it's a real strange job interview. Um, because, no, I mean, because really, like, the qualifications are, are strange. I mean, what really are the qualifications of Peter for this job? What does Jesus expect of him? Well, in our, in our gospel, the only competency that Peter shows, the only reason that Jesus seems to hire him, is because he knows Jesus' identity. That's it, right? He knows who Jesus is. And because he knows who Jesus is, Jesus says, Peter, I will build my church upon you. And that's it. That's his only qualifications. And in fact, the Gospels are actually really good at emphasizing that really is his only qualification, right? He's a, he's a fisherman from a podunk town. He's in the northeast corner of Israel. It would be like Jesus hiring somebody. I don't want to pick on, uh, actually, I don't, yeah, of, of uh, some part of our country, right, that maybe nobody here is from, right? That's like the backwoods of America and hiring him and like, you're going to be my, my guy, right? And it's not even really clear that Peter's a very charismatic person that never really comes through in the Gospels at all. Peter's not a scholar of Scripture. He's not a scholar of the law. He's not a Pharisee. He's not a Sadducee. He's a practicing Jew, but he has no specialty in, like, the faith. Um, He has no demonstrated leadership skills. And, in fact, if anything, the Gospels show that he's really not the kind of guy you'd want for the job, right? Like, he continually fails. And Jesus, curiously, right, hires Peter. He gives him the job of the papacy for apparently no other reason than he knows who Jesus is. That's really weird. And I was kind of thinking about that all week as I was preparing my homily, you know, I was kind of like stirring my oatmeal in the morning, like what, like what, you know, why, why is, the only thing that Jesus hires him for is his identity, like that's so strange. And what I was thinking is, is that, you know, one of the ways to to think of this is, is, is that Jesus treats Peter as he does because Peter's job is to reproduce Christ. That that Peter's job is to be the one who builds up the body of Christ on earth. And so Peter has to act almost as this painter or this artist who has to gaze upon the model, has to look upon Christ, and then hold the image of Christ in his mind and then reproduce and paint Uh, what he has seen. That Peter has to be like a, a portrait painter or a landscape painter, right? If, if you're going to paint this beautiful mountain scene, you just got to sit there and stare at the mountain scene for a good, you know, for a good while before you can start to paint it. Right? And so Peter's job, because he's the one who will reproduce the body of Christ, right? Because he's building Christ on earth, he has to know who Jesus Christ is. He has to gaze upon him. And then as the high priest, right, he has to know Jesus Christ and then paint the face of Christ in the heart of God's people. And this is really, I think, the job of Peter, the job of every priest, and I think the job of each of us as Christians as well, right? That we are a priestly people. And so we work together with Peter, under Peter, right? We still have a pope today. And our job, therefore, is just to gaze upon Christ, to know who he is, to know his identity, to know who he is for me, and then holding him in my heart to literally like paint him onto the world, right? To reproduce Christ in my daily life with my family, my friends, and my workplace at the grocery store, anywhere I am, right? My job as a Christian is to reproduce Christ, to paint Jesus Christ, his face, onto all of creation. And that's our mission as Christians. That's it. And that's really the way that we should measure our lives. So often we hold ourselves to different standards than perhaps God does. And so often we can hold ourselves to to higher standards or other standards and kind of like beat ourselves up of like, ah, you know, I'm not perfect or I didn't do this or that. It's like, well, no, my, my job in life is to know Jesus Christ, to love him, to hold him in my heart and to reproduce him onto the world. And there's no part of that definition that includes the word success, right? Jesus never asks us to be successful. He never really actually promises us that we will be successful. And if you look at his first 12 followers, um, all but one of them died. Pretty violent deaths, right? That's not really success. And you could think if, if the founding fathers, right, kind of underwent a similar fate, like 1776, they wrote the declaration or whatever. I don't know. I, you know uh, and like 1778, they all die like a horrible death, right? We'd say, well, that was a fun, that was a fun go. I guess we're back to having a king, right? That was a, that was a good try. 
But that's really what happens, that, that, that God does not ask of us success. He asks of us to, to know who he is, to, to know his face, to love him, and to, to paint him onto the world. And so therefore, to know Jesus Christ is the most practical thing that I can do. I can hold myself to any other standard, but the standard that God asks of me is just to know him, and therefore to, to gaze upon his face in prayer, to spend time with him in the chapel, to read the scriptures and really kind of think about them seriously, to participate really actively at mass and, and to give my whole self to God. To, to gaze upon Christ's face is the most practical thing I can do in this life. And in everything that I am has to flow from that. And everything that I am can flow from that, right? I think as Christians, we gotta have such confidence that Jesus Christ really is the Son of God, as, as Peter points out this morning. And that if that's really true, he's all that we have to offer to people. And he's all that we really need to offer to people, right? He's, that's, that's quite a bit, that's quite a lot. But if that's really true, then we just have to gaze upon his face, know him, love him, and bring him into the world through our actions, through our decisions, through our life. So this morning, let's just do that, right? Just a real simple way, like today and all days, just to know Christ, to follow him, and to seek to bring him into this world.